everyone, I'm Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to learn how to knit. We're going to start out just knitting a simple square dishcloth. Um, the yarn that we're using today, or that I am using, this is Knit Picks Dishy. It's a great yarn for dishcloths. It's 100% cotton and it is a worsted weight yarn. Worsted weight means a medium weight. It is not the thinnest yarn and it is not the thickest yarn. So it is right in the middle and it's a great place to learn. It's very important if you're, if you are planning to use this as a dishcloth that you do use hundred percent cotton yarn. If you use anything with wool, you're not going to want to use it on your face or on your dishes. Believe me. We're also using today. I'm using size seven knit picks, sunstruck straight needles. These are made out of wood. Wooden needles are great for beginners because it allows you to keep your stitches on the needles easier. It's a lot more grip to it than uh, slick metal needles would be. So, very good. We also have scissors. We'll use this at the very end um, after we've woven in our ends. And this is called a darning needle. Darning needles are uh, an essential tool for knitters. You cannot knit without them unless you want little scraggly tails of yarn hanging off of your project, which we don't. I love the Chibi by Clover. And I will put a link to this in the description and everything that we've used here. Um, the Chibi is one great because it's just this little case where you can unscrew and it comes, they come in different types, but this particular set comes in with three size needles which is perfect for a, a very skinny yarn, um, medium weight worsted yarn, or a chunky yarn. So I love my chibis. We're gonna put those back in there and we're gonna screw that up and there we go. So let's get started. Okay guys, some things that I want you to really focus on as we begin to knit here. You wanna make sure that you do everything you can not to drop stitches. Dropping stitches means when you're stitch falls off the needle, okay? And you are gonna also want to make sure that you are not duplicating stitches. Duplicating stitches would be accidentally creating an extra stitch out of one stitch. You can do that by knitting through the yarn and um, causing it to become unplied for whatever reason and then it separates and then you make two stitches out of one. Don't do that. Be very mindful of your knitting. You don't wanna drop a stitch because it, it will ruin your project. Um, you can pick up stitches, but we will learn that at a later time. First thing we're gonna do, let's get started here, is we're gonna learn how to cast on. We wanna have a decent sized tail here. Tail meaning the little end that's gonna hang off your yarn. If your tail is too short, you will not be able to properly sew it in at the end. You can't sew this into the end of your knitting if it's that short. It's not gonna work. And then you're gonna have this little squirt hanging off your yarn. I'm gonna show you how to do a loop cast on uh, simply because that's just how I learned. But we're also gonna learn the long tail cast on. The long tail cast on is the cast on that knitters use probably 95% of the time when knitting. It's, it looks complicated, but once you learn it, it's muscle memory and you just know how to do it. Uh, and I would recommend just going ahead and learning how to do it, okay? But we'll start with a loop cast on. You're gonna take your thread or your yarn, you're gonna make you know your circle like this, make a loop and a slip knot, okay? So there we go. We're gonna stick that on our needle we're always gonna cast on to the right hand needle, okay? This is important because this is the, the working needle. Your left hand needle is the needle that is going to hold the stitches and the right needle is the one that is going to knit the stitches, okay? So to make a loop cast on, we have our, our slip knot on the needle. You're simply just gonna make a loop, make a loop, make a loop and you do this over and over until you have 20 stitches. Now, when you're pulling your yarn, and this is true for all cast-ons, do not pull it tight. Believe me, you want it to be, you want it to be 
secure, okay? You don't want to leave a loop like this, okay? Because that's it's going to show when you go back to knit. It's going to show on your edge. You want to make sure the stitches are nice and even looking, okay? But not too tight. If you do this too tight, you're going to have a hard time knitting the, these stitches and getting your needle underneath these stitches. You want to just leave just enough room, just enough to where it's secure, okay? So you do that until you reach 20, uh, 20 stitches, okay? Or we can do the long tail cast on. So if you don't want to do that, just fast forward a little bit here or just bear with me. But I think it's very important for new knitters to learn. So we're gonna undo that cast. Hey y'all, Jen from the future here. Go ahead and cast on 40 stitches and not 20. Long tail cast on. It's called a long tail cast on because you have a long tail when you're casting on. It's exactly what it is. So you're gonna wanna pull about one, two, three, even four feet of your yarn, okay? I'll always overestimate in the beginning because if you don't, you're gonna not end up with enough yarn to do the cast on, but you won't know until you're towards the end of casting on and it's very frustrating and then you have to start all over. So long tail cast on. We've got our tail over here and our working yarn over here. Another thing, uh, tip, is that I always have my, my yarn ball somewhere off to the left because if it's over here, it's gonna be pulling across your work, it's gonna get in the way, so always have it off to the left somewhere, even when I'm sitting on the couch. So, okay, back to our long tail cast on. You have your tail over here. You're gonna take your yarn just like this around your thumb and your pointer finger, okay? And make a triangle. See that triangle there? You take your needle, you start above, you're gonna go under your thumb and under your finger, and then you pull it through. So let's look at that again. See, we still have our triangle. You're gonna go under the thumb and over the finger. Okay, I'm gonna do the casting on, the very first cast on again, just so you can see it one more time. You're gonna take your needle, you're gonna go above the top, up and under the thumb, and then you're gonna wrap that part around the pointer finger there and pull it through. So now we have two stitches on the needle. Once you've done that part, that's the hardest part. Once you've done that part, it gets easier. You just go under the thumb, over the finger, pull it through. And same as with the loop cast on, you want to make sure that you do not pull these stitches too tight, but you do wanna pull them securely, okay? Under the thumb, over the finger, pull it through. Under the thumb, over the finger, pull it through under the thumb, over the finger, pull it through. Under the thumb, over the finger, pull it through. Under the thumb, over the finger, pull it through. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Notice how I'm checking on my stitches as I go, okay? You don't wanna have huge gaps in between these. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, let's see, we're actually, we're gonna go to 30. We're gonna go to 40 stitches, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna go big time here, right? 31, 20, all right. It's a looking a little, maybe a tiny wonky here, but this is cotton yarn. Cotton yarn is uh, not as easy to manipulate as wool yarn. And this, this will, this is fine right here. You know, you don't have to be that, that perfect, but this will knit out okay on the next round. So we have cast on. Now we have our tail over here and our working yarn over here. A mistake that a lot of beginning knitters make is that they accidentally start knitting on the tail and then they run out of yarn and they're like, whoops, I knit the tail. So to prevent doing that, just after you've cast on, take your yarn and just knot it, okay? Just take some in it, put any kind of knot you want, okay? That way you know, hey, this is the tail, don't, don't knit this part. Okay, everyone, now we're going to learn the knit stitch. So. 
the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to have your yarn your needle with your cast on stitches in your left hand okay and your working needle in your right hand tail is going to be towards the front working yarn towards the back we're going to take that right hand needle place it underneath the loop of that first stitch from the front towards the back we're going to take our working yarn wrap it from front to back we're going to pull it up and underneath and we're going to slide it off our needle okay i'm going to place it underneath that stitch from front to back get that tail out of the way up and under and slide it off let's look at that again front to back there pull it through slide it off front to back front to back pull it under slide it off And you're going to do this over and over and over until you get to the end of the row. Slide your stitches up as you go so that you're not pulling your yarn too much. Okay. Front to back, front to back, slide it off. This is when it's going to be very important not to drop stitches and not to split stitches. That is something that so many beginners do. And it's easy to split stitches if you go underneath the yarn here and you actually knit into the middle of it, okay? Keep your stitches moving as you go. Those thumbs help move your stitches up to the tip of the needle. We're going to keep going until we get to the end of the row. I apologize for the chips in my fingernail polish today. Hope it's not too distracting. So you're going to keep knitting until you get to the end of the needle. Oh, oh, see, I almost dropped that stitch. I'm gonna carefully put it back on there and knit it. Disaster saved. Okay. So now we've reached the end of our row. And now this needle is empty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this to the left hand. Put this in your right hand. You're gonna turn your work. Make sure this part right here is a little bit taut. You don't wanna leave this, these end, these end stitches loose because then you're gonna have a wonky edge, okay? Not too tight though. And we're just gonna do it again. We're gonna knit across, okay? So up and underneath that first needle, over, under, slide it off. Front to back, front to back, bring it to the front and slide it off. We're going to just do this until, you're going to continue doing this knit stitch until your dishcloth is as long as you want it to be. Now, if you wanted to make a scarf instead, you could absolutely do that. You just, I would, I would recommend having a wool scarf, it's going to be a lot warmer. Um, you just keep knitting for as long as you want this to, to, to go. Okay, and then you'll have a scarf instead. But for me, I'm gonna make a dishcloth with this cotton here so we can have a quick way to show you. And I'm gonna keep going until I've got about a square or it's the length that I prefer it to be. So when you're knitting, just keep in mind, try not to drop your stitches, try not to duplicate your stitches, just keep knitting. Try to maintain a nice even gauge here, okay? Gauge is um, how tight or loose you knit, really. And don't pull those stitches too tight. Don't leave them too loose either. But the main thing is you want them to be nice and even. 
This stitch is called garter stitch. It's where you simply knit row after row after row and you don't do any purling. Knitting is made up basically knits, purls, increases, and decreases, and that's it. And there's lots of ways to increase and decrease, um, but knitting and purling are the two basic stitches of knitting. So keep turning that work, keep knitting in your garter stitch here. It makes this nice kind of garter effect, as you would say. So keep knitting until you have this the length you want it to be. So we'll be back shortly with more. All right, y'all, welcome back. We are here with our almost finished dishcloth. So now I'm going to show you how to cast off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our yarn, we're gonna take our work back in that left hand, right hand needle here. We're going to knit the first stitch, slide it off the needle, we're gonna knit the second stitch, slide it off the needle. So then you are going to take your left hand needle and put it under that first stitch there, right into that loop, just like that. You're gonna pull it over the other stitch, the second stitch, and then pull it off. And then we have decreased a stitch, okay? We're gonna do that again. We're gonna put the right hand needle in and knit, leaving two stitches on the side on the right hand needle. We're gonna put our left hand needle underneath the loop of that first stitch and slide it over your second stitch. Be very careful to, to not drop um, your working stitch here off the needle. So we're gonna knit another stitch and then we're gonna slip one over. That's called passing this, the stitch over. We're gonna knit one stitch and we're gonna slip it over that stitch there. Knit one stitch, and pass it over, and you're gonna do this until you get all the way to the end of your piece. All right, y'all, so now we're just left with this one last stitch on our needle. So we're gonna learn how to get this yarn tied up here and these tails woven in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually slip that needle out. Make sure you leave your loop big enough to where you don't accidentally pull it, okay? So we're gonna leave that loop sticking out. You are going to take your yarn, leave a decent sized tail here and cut that end. You're simply gonna slip this through and tie it up with a little knot there, okay? So now what we need to do is weave in our tails. I'm gonna cut this end because it was very long and it's gonna be a little bit much. Don't cut it too short, but I'm gonna cut about here for that tail. So we're gonna put that to the side. We're gonna take our darning needles here Let's pick the size that's best. I'm gonna pick this medium sized one here for our worsted weight yarn. So we're gonna take our darning needle. You're gonna thread your needle just like that. And you are going to simply sew it into the edge of the yarn. Now notice how I'm going to go this way when I sew in my edge. I'm not, there's stretch to this garter stitch if you stretch it this way. I don't wanna sew it into the stretch cause you're gonna be able to see that when you, if you pull on the dishcloth or expand this at all. So there's a lot less stretch this way and it's a lot easier to hide the tail. So when I knit this, which is this type of stitch, garter stitch, I always weave my tail in this way. and. I put mine through the yarn, through the plies. I wanna make sure that when I'm doing this, I don't see a lot of the needle. If you see a lot of the needle, that's where the, the thread is gonna go, and it could cause you to see that 
sewn in thread. So I am going to go just an inch or two. You really don't have to go far when you're sewing in your tail. Okay, so see how that's pretty concealed by the needle or by the yarn. The needle is pretty concealed, so I will consider that good. So I'm gonna pull that through, that edge there. Don't pull it too tight. I always go back and stretch it out so that way I know that it's not gonna give me a wonky looking edge there, okay? And then we're gonna go back. Don't go right through the same spot that the yarn came out because if you do, you're just gonna pull it right back through and it can, it can actually just come back out like you never s s had sewn it in. So I'm gonna go through this little ply here in a different spot and then we're gonna go back through the same way we came. Oh, I wanna hide my yarn a little bit better than that. So we're gonna sew it through here. There we go, not too bad. We're gonna pull. Ugh. I just uh, put on some lotion for you guys so my hands weren't too dry. Having a technical difficulty there. Pull that through. And there you go. You can't really see that end. So now you're gonna get as close to your project as possible. Make sure you don't snip the actual yarn, but you're gonna snip right at the end of that tail and pull it taut. There you go. One end woven in. And you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side where you started. I'm gonna thread it through. Oh, sometimes when you're threading your yarn, it, the plies can come apart. That's very common. So what I do is I just fold it a little bit like that. And then I'll pull it through. There you go. All right, and same thing. I'm gonna go across this way, not this way. Take your yarn. And sometimes it can be a little finicky, a lot of knitters hate weaving in their ends, but I actually really enjoy this part of the knitting. It's like, okay, I'm finished. Let's, let's show the world. I'm gonna go in a different spot there. Sometimes cotton yarn too can be a little stiff when you're working with it. But I do really love this Knit Picks Dishy because it is much softer than a lot of the cottons you find at your big box craft store. All right, so another end woven in. We're gonna take our scissors one more time, snip the tail, and voila, you have made your very first knitted object. Once you wash this, you see how this end is a little bit, you know, scraggly? It's gonna, it's gonna end up actually even out. When you wash yarn, it can really help it to what we say bloom. So that way the fibers are, get nice and even uh, and nice and just, you know, um, pretty looking. We, we, we block it to make sure that it's called blocking when you wash and soak your knitted objects. It makes everything just come to life. So congratulations, you guys. You've just made your first knitted item. I'm so proud of you. Thanks for bearing with me here. And I hope that you've learned something today. Keep your eye out for uh, dishcloth number two that I'll be working on here. So that way we can learn stockinette stitch and also the purl stitch. We'll see you next time.